All right, now we're into section 22.5 in the textbook, audible sound waves, starting on page 448. We'll do this in several parts. There's uh, several different topics uh, in this section. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about is definitions. So the definitions we're going to talk about here are based on human hearing. And then there are three different categories of frequencies um, that we'll discuss uh, that have important definitions. The first one is audible sound. What is the typical frequency range of sound that humans can hear? So audible sound is typically from 20 up to 20,000 hertz. That's a generally accepted range for human hearing. Now, a lot of young people can hear close to and near 20,000 hertz. As you get older, you lose some of that ability. So it's not uncommon for people as they get older to maybe only be able to hear up to 8 or 10 or 12,000 hertz. But generally, uh, a low of 20 up to 20,000 hertz is considered audible sound for humans. There are two other categories. In infrasonic sound is frequency that is less than or below 20 hertz. And then ultrasonic sound is any sounds that are considered greater than 20,000 hertz or beyond the range of human hearing. Now when we talk about medical ultrasound, we're not talking about sound uh, at 20 or 22 or 25 or 30,000 hertz. We're talking about millions of hertz. And, but as a generally accepted book definition, anything above 20,000 hertz is considered to be in the ultrasonic range. All right, another topic to discuss is the comparison between the physics of sound and comparing that to how do people perceive sound when they hear sound. So we'll make a little table here. Physical properties. In other words, what does physics tell us about sound? And then and then the sensory considerations, how do people perceive sound? So the first one that we're familiar with is frequency. And frequency is how many uh, cycles per second does the sound have? How often is, is, the, is the sound cycling? As, uh, as a sensory uh, consideration, uh, frequency is perceived as what we would consider to be pitch. Our ears and our brain uh, will recognize it as pitch, high or low pitch. Another one is uh, intensity. We haven't talked about intensity yet, but we will later in this section. So intensity uh, is actually a measurement of sound, and we perceive it, when we hear sound, we perceive it as loudness. And then the third different physical property we're going to talk about is called wave form. And what we mean by waveform is we have we have talked about this a little bit. Uh, let me just draw a sketch. At the very beginning of chapter 22, we sketched out what a sound would look like if you graphed it based on the variations in pressure. And we we graphed a wave that sort of looked like that. 
So that's what we would call the wave form. What does the wave look like in terms of the pressure variations? So in terms of physical properties, if you just had a pure sound, which was just made up of just one single frequency, it might look just like this as a pure sound. But as we've discussed in the past, it's possible that a fundamental frequency might exist alongside overtones or harmonics. So in other words, you might have multiple frequencies mixed together. So, the, so that when you looked at the, at the actual waveform, if you were able to graph it, it might be a lot more complex than this. There might be some other harmonics or overtones mixed in that makes it look a little more interesting. And when that happens, it may, may cause a richness of sound that's very pleasing or, or maybe unpleasing. So waveform is how we would look at it in terms of physics, a physical property. And we would perceive it as the quality of a sound. So as humans, we're, we're sensing pitch, loudness, and quality the corresponding physical properties are frequency, intensity, and waveform. Now let's take a look at sound intensity. Intensity at some level represents the flow of energy. You remember when we first uh, started talking about mechanical waves back in chapter 21, we did say that a mechanical wave represents the transfer of energy but not the transfer of matter. So as sound is traveling through air, the air molecules are vibrating as a longitudinal wave, but you're not really transporting air molecules from one place to another. You are, however, transferring energy through the air, and that's what we hear as sound. So we're going to uh, define intensity, and we're, we will abbreviate it with a capital I, and that is equal to Power divided by area. So power is really going to be a measure of how quickly that energy is flowing through the air. And that area we're talking about is, for instance, when we hear a sound, we're hearing it at this area right around our ear. So you're really talking about energy being quickly or not quickly being transferred through the air and impacting your ear over this small area. In terms of units, units for power is watts. That would be the, the metric units for power. It's the same units we use for light bulbs. If you see a light bulb and it's rated as 60 watts, uh, it's the same units as we're using here. And then the area, again, in metric, would be square meters. So we'll be um, using just strictly metric units for sound intensity. Then there are there are several key intensities that we will uh, first define. One is, again, this is again based on human hearing. So the hearing threshold the hearing threshold would be the faintest or the least loud, the faintest audible sound that somebody could actually detect. The 
remember, we're not talking about frequency now. This is loudness. So the faintest, and that will also be use the capital I with a subscript zero as the hearing threshold. And that is 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. So you can see it's very, very, very tiny uh, uh, intensity. 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. Then at the other end of the spectrum, there's something called threshold. It's that intensity of sound at which it, it hurts you. It will hurt your ear to listen to it. And we'll give that a capital I with a subscript P. And that will be one watt per square meter. So considerably higher. So that's the maximum intensity. Pain threshold is actually the maximum intensity that the ear can withstand without feeling pain. So just just a little above one watt per square meter, then it'll it become very uncomfortable. All right. Now let's compare these two. Let's compare the hearing threshold to the pain threshold or the right, hearing threshold to the pain threshold. So if we were to divide those two, let's compare the pain threshold to the hearing threshold. That is one, one watt per square meter would be the same as one times 10 to the zero, because 10 to the zero is just one. And we'll divide that by one times 10 to the minus 12. And you remember your exponent rules we can flip the 10 to the minus 12 up into the numerator. So this is 1 times 10 to the 12th. The sign of the, of, the, of the minus 12 changes when you flip it up into the numerator. And if you were to write that out with all the zeros, I think that's enough. So that would be 1 trillion. So what that means is, the, in terms of loudness, the pain threshold is one trillion times uh, more intense than the hearing threshold. So when we, when we study intensity and we have to do comparisons of intensities and when we do problem solving, that difference between the pain threshold and the hearing threshold is so vast, it's hard to get your arms around it. So in order to address that issue and to be able to express intensities in a reasonable way without dealing with such vast numbers, then we are going to use we're going to use the logarithm scale in order to uh, change the way that we express those intensities and make some sense out of them. And so this will be the end of part one. When we get into part two, we'll start explaining what that logarithm scale is, give you some examples of the use of the logarithm scale, and then show how you would mathematically uh, do calculations uh, on your calculator with logarithms.